Hi there, I'm Ed. I'm Dan. And welcome to Unsolicited, the show where we read advice columns from the past and we, we rate them. We rate the question, we rate the answer, and then we give the worst advice we could possibly give. Um, but you know that because you saw our intro. Unsolicited advice. Unsolicited advice. You know it's great to share problems. A rip straight from the public forum. Today is a special episode because we are following up from an episode yesterday, which you should go watch. Absolutely, oh, yeah. we're we continuing the, the dicks. dicks. It's a continued, continuing Miss Dix. We went back in time to 1934. 1934. We read an article. The article from Miss Dorothy Dix, who is an advice columnist, and uh, I'm going to read the next column. I still haven't read it. I'm not ahead of it. I, I did not read this, so I'm reading it cold. Um, but she's got three pieces in here, and I'm going to read the second one because the first one was hilarious. Okay. Dear Dorothy Dix, we are a young couple in a very modest circumstances, just getting established. Recently, my husband bought me, brought me home from a business trip a bracelet for a gift. I need so many things more than jewelry that I just couldn't help showing my disappointment when he saw how I felt. He gave me a $20 bill and said he would never give me anything but money in the future and that henceforth I could get my own presents. He was hurt, but when I tell him I am sorry, he says, it's all right, but I'll never buy you another thing. Do you think I made a mistake and that I am being practical to the exclusion of more valuable traits? I still think that paying $20 for a little trinket is a wicked, is wicked extravagance, and it really pains me to see money spent for something that doesn't mean much. E C. Mm. Pretty good question. I think that is a pretty good question. Yeah, <laughs> pretty, I agree. Good question, man. Yeah, what, you said this was thirty-eight. Nineteen thirty-four. Nineteen thirty. I mean, that's a. I mean, you know, nineteen thirty-four yeah. is you're talking. You're talking depression era, right? Yeah. I well, mean, yeah. she's yeah, just she's getting got, out of it a little bit. Yeah. Well, no, still in it, man. Oh well, yeah, still in it. Yeah. Market crash in twenty-nine. Mm-hmm. Um. So that's a good question. Was I wrong? Was I? It's, uh... Yeah, was I wrong? And and yeah, I mean, like, I mean, this is kind of this is the kind of question that's good, and this is why it's good, is because every marriage has this, where like your gut comes out of your mouth, and yeah. the other person is like, fine, permanent. This is what you just said that came out of your gut. Yep. is now a permanent fixture of our relationship. The yep. 30 years, 40 yeah, years you're going to be dealing I like it because she's not like, I was right, right? Yeah, good. It's, it's, I get, I'm yeah. giving it a nine. I'm giving a it, this, is, I, this might be my first nine. Ooh, ooh. I, um, but, uh, I'll give it an eight. All yeah. right, all right. We got. We, we both like it. That's good, yeah. that's good. This yeah. is a high, highly rated, and from what I've read of Miss Dix, this might be our highly rated episode today. We're at 17. There's been whole episodes that didn't rate a 17. All right, answer. The trouble with practical people is that they're not always good judges of values, and they do not realize that a bit of fo- that a bit of foolishness that expresses a sentiment may be the most worthwhile thing that is possible for money to purchase. And that is the mistake you made about your bracelet. You thought your husband wasted his money by buying it when he might have put it into something substantial like a washing machine or a vacuum cleaner, a new set of pots and pans. And in that, no doubt you're right from the practical point of view, but your husband bought you the bracelet because it symbolized to him your youth, your pretty white arms, because you still had him for the glamor of beauty that he wanted to hang you with jewels, as every man in love has always desired to adorn his sweetheart. And he had a glow of joyous anticipation in thinking of your delight in it. And then you let him down flat because he'd been extravagant, because he wasted his money, because he hadn't brought bought you something useful, and you'd killed something in him that will never that will never come alive again. You've destroyed something in his love that you can never conjure back. When a man begins giving his wife practical presents or money and telling her to buy what she wants, he may love her still, but the romance is gone. The joy of giving to her is gone. He doesn't daydream about how she looked at looked in this or that or picture her joy and how her eyes will brighten at a surprise he's afraid of getting her the wrong thing it's the safest to give her a check and the champagne has turned to dishwater jesus this is brutal 
Of course, I know men do make terrible blunders in their presence. Once a, mil once a milner told me about an old farmer who came into her shop and insisted on buying a $30 bridesmaid's hat, a $30 bridesmaid hat, all trimmed up in pale pink feathers for his hardworking elderly life. And when she tried to make him take a plain little sensible dark hat instead, he indignantly replied, no, indeed, nothing ain't too good for my Mandy. And that, I think, is a story to cry over. For he still saw Mandy as young and beautiful. But no matter how unsuitable the gift, a wise wife swallows her disappointment and enthuses over it and lies like a lady when her husband gives it to her. For he is giving her something far more important than the hat or the gown or the trinket itself. He's giving her love and romance. Wow. Jesus. Man, this guy. This, this lady. has got like. You keep calling her a guy. Oh, it's good. Dorothy. Dorothy, yeah, sorry, Dorothy. This, well, this I assume woman. it's Dorothy. They say Dorothy, but it's still just some dude. Because it's Sounds 1938. What, what what newspaper is going to give a woman a job? No, she, it's she, she's 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 got a job. It's definitely a woman. What? Wow, that's yeah. That's I mean, I was reading about her a little bit. Was, am I wrong? And she's just like, yeah, you're fucking wrong. <laughs> you're so fucking wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you you've killed your husband's love for you. Do you yeah. Yeah, oh do, do, and that's the that's the question. I mean like yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, she's she answered it. I mean, like, whew. Whew. Oh. I mean with no sugar at all. <laughs> just the just just the salt and the mayonnaise. I mean <laughs> all right. Oh. Wow. Uh, oh. I mean, you know what? I'm going 9. Like yes, you ask, did I do something wrong? Dude, she dude. answered. I mean, it's probably a little hard. And gave follow-up reasons why. A lot of them. A lot That's of a them. Long, a lot, it got long even answer. angrier as he went on. He's like, <laughs> and another thing. She <laughs> went was on. So, she was so angry. She went home and like beat her, beat her husband over, <laughs> over this. She did. Yeah. No. She was. She was the upset. Author. The author. Yeah. I think yeah. she. Uh, I think she hits the nail on the head a little hard, yeah. but I think that's clearly her style, mm -hmm. um, which is what's a, which, I, frankly, I think is to, to us reading all these, it, kind of refreshing. Yeah. I mean, it's not exactly advice, yeah. but uh, well, no, uh, was, yeah, I guess it's not advice because it was just like answering the question. And it wasn't like she didn't really give it, but I, I still liked it. The more I talk about it, but I, I still like the I like I like the response. I do. I like. I do the because it, because it's a it's a note to pragmatists everywhere. What she's yeah. trying to do is very clear. Is that's you, you, it, and it kind of like brings this whole thing around to like advice columns aren't just for the person reading the advice column. Sure. It's for. Sure everybody that's in that situation and if yeah. there's a bunch of people that are reading miss dorothy dicks and the, yeah. in its post depression there's a bunch of pragmatists out of there that are like oh i can't believe my husband you know i got mad at my husband for buying me a flower like right. or a piece of jewelry or something like that or i got mad at my wife for you know what i mean it's like yeah uh, the total, total sign of the times where it's just like yeah you were wrong and you broke Ooh. his heart you should yeah, have shut the tough. hell up I'm giving it a nine, man. That's a that's an 18 for me. This is easily the highest. I was just the gonna I was gonna say seven, just because there was no act. Like the only advice was showing the light of like how wrong she the, 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 the person was. She didn't give her any. She could have thrown in something to build on. Yeah, some advice on how to like how to like get this back. Right. Yeah. So that's why. Okay. Okay. Right, I worst, can see that. Worst advice now. Oof, this is gonna be tough. Cause he's like borderline gives advice. She does. I, I, I think her advice is outstanding. My bad advice is going to be. Consist. Remember, it's 1934. Yeah. Is going to be, consistently buy your husband extravagant gifts until he starts buying you extravagant, extravagant gifts. So go out and buy yourself some fancy cufflinks and then a fancy hat. And every chance you get, store away money and buy your husband fancy stuff, to show him that. that that you are extravagant. Man, that is that is the, the quietest I've ever heard you in response. Normally I get like at least a pity laugh. I mean, I guess it's, yeah, it's not it's not very funny. I mean, what, what else do you want me to say? Is it difficult to top Miss Dorothy that, 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 that is difficult to top, I'll agree. But, uh, um, what do you got? You know, I, I was not inspired by it, Donald. 
that's fair. I, I my my worst advice is uh, every time uh, that he does present you with money instead of the gift, just take it, just burn it right in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty bad. Burn, yeah, that's that that is bad advice. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, uh, you 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 win. Like, man, this is the second time in a row. We've got nothing to say at the end of the episode. Like, it's not even really well, an advice yeah, column. It's, it's a little bit hard when the when, when the person is so brutal in their response. <laughs> you there's know, a, they're already being pretty mean. There's a third. There's a third one. <laughs> Should we I, do a three? I, three I have parter? One for, our, for our next uh, for our next. Round. Let's do a three part. Three days of Dorothy Dix, and then and then and then we'll move on. All right, tune in tomorrow. For more dicks. <laughs> for more <laughs> for more dicks. Tune in tomorrow for more, more dicks, dicks, ladies ladies and germs. We're gonna do one more one more because we know you're enjoying this. We're not gonna have anything to say at the end. We might even skip our, our worst advice because if, if if this is formatted the way most things are, this is gonna be intense. So oh uh, thank you for it's joining us run to listen. <laughs> what were you saying? What were you saying? I, I, just end it, or okay. Dan had had a thought. We'll start next episode with Dan's thought. Thank you, Jordan, for listening.